Peace, family. This is Master U. It's been a long time. I look forward to a uh, great and insightful show with my brothers. Great and insightful show with my brothers. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm uh, I'm Remesu, uh, Elder Remesu. Uh, I'm uh, tuning in from Virginia Beach, and uh, I want to uh, just uh, thank the group for allowing me to uh, sit in and share some of my opinions and some of my facts uh, as it relates to uh, addiction and more so with uh, uh, DMX and uh, his alleged uh, overdose with, with, uh, with drugs. Peace, family. This is Nev Unk. Hope y'all doing all right there in the world. Uh, hope y'all had a good weekend. I'm here just to chime in on um, the DMX situation. I want to give a quick shout out to Monique Jackson, Michael Hunt, Richard Cox, and everybody else that's in the um, chat family. Um, now, a lot of y'all know um, I'm an um, 80s baby. So early 90s DMX, hey, that was the shit. I'm going to just keep it 100. Everybody was listening to DMX, man. And um, everybody felt his music. You know, early on, I wasn't conscious. So I was still in the street. So when I heard his music, his music was a whole different level for me early on. It wasn't nothing positive. <laughs> it was just doing what we do. You know what I'm saying? But everybody felt DMX right there. So what I want to do, you know, I'm going to let the elder start off um, and just give a quick, um, you know, his thoughts on DMX. We'll go around in a circle. Then I'm going to play a couple of videos so we can jump into this. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Peace. Uh, Rahu Bat. Shalom, shalom alaikum, assalamu alaikum, whatever, whatever your greeting be, I, I come, you know, in the name of peace and tranquility. And uh, as far as DMX is concerned, I, I think that, uh, well, I, I'm, I don't think, I, I know that he was a very powerful influence in the, uh, in the hip hop world, because he came with that real hip hop, you know, hip, hip hop, even the spelling of it is, is, is an acronym for higher infinite power at the hip, healing our people, that's the hop. And that's what he, to me, he came to represent a, 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 a idea that uh, you, can, you can change and revolutionize your life from being a stick up kid, you know, with a dog, to being a, a performer that's recognized and respected and loved worldwide. That's a powerful message to come from one extreme to another and be accepted. And that's what he did. You know, he came with that yang positive energy when hip hop was turning soft, you know, it was turning soft. The, 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 uh, the wisdom that he showed was that he was honest about his drug use. Uh, and the, the more that I, uh, I listened to his, you know, his legendary, uh, uh, videos, the more I understand that it's really important that if uh, if you're suffering from uh, any addiction, then you have to understand the rules that uh, that will allow you to recover. Because there's a there's a particular there's a particular way that you know anyone could recover from any type of drug, whether it be cigarette smoking, whether it be uh, you know chasing women, whether it be gambling. You know, we all got different types of addictions. But one of the things I can tell you is that when we talk about mood and mind altering substances like uh, like the cocaine uh, that he say that he was addicted to by way of smoking the men woolers, because I know back in the day, you know, uh, people uh, used to smoke woolers because that gave them a certain status, you know, because at least they wasn't smoking it out of the pipe because the, the pipe, uh, people who smoked it out of the pipe was given a bad name you know they was really they was crackheads and they would it was the lowest of the low and they would rob and steal from you and do anything where those that smoke from the ruler they had a different type of status and this is the this is the uh, this is the area that the dmx came from but uh, but the thing about it is that see you you 
you can't, you cannot uh, attempt to recover from any type of drug if you're hanging out with people that are still using drugs. And one of the first things you learn in recovery is that you have to stay away from people, places, and things. And a lot of times that's real difficult, uh, you know, when you, you know, when you realize, hey, you know, you can't hang out with your boys that's smoking uh, uh, weed if you want to stop smoking weed. You know, you, you know, if you want to, if you want to be a millionaire, you got to hang out with millionaires because you're going to think and do what they do. You want to, if you want to stop using drugs, you got to hang out with people that ain't using drugs. Otherwise, you're going to use drugs. And when I, and, and, and if you don't, you know, if you don't understand that, then you'll, you'll, you'll switch, switch seats on the Titanic. And what I mean by switching seats on the Titanic, if I ain't smoking a, a crack, you know, I'm drinking liquor. If I ain't drinking liquor, right, I'm smoking weed. You know, we, we switch seats, but, but we, you know, when it's all said and done, it's like, it's like little children going down to the miracle round and they watch the miracle round, you know, and then when it stops, you know, they all jump on the, on, on the miracle round. And some, some kids get on the black horse, some get on the red horse, some get on the white horse, some jump in, even jump in the buggy. And then when the miracle round starts to go around and they yelling and, and screaming and, you know, miracle round going around, going around. And then when it stops, I don't care what horse you jumped up on, whether it was a red, the brown, or in the boogie, in the buggy. When you got off that miracle round, you all got off the same, dizzy. It didn't matter what horse you drove up on. You all was dizzy when you got off there. And that's the same thing with the drug thing. And I think I don't think that uh, DMX understood that. You know what I mean? Because you know when you when you in that in that uh in that light, you go into parties. You know, turn you you're turning it up with the champagne or whatever. You know what I mean? So it was very really difficult for him to really really stay on path as far as like I said, trying to remain clean. And and these are and these are things that that the, that the government and people who are, are are trying to get rid of us as a people, you know, destroy black, black masculinity, feminize, you know, the black man and, and, uh, and, uh, masculize the black woman. These are the things that they understand about us as a people, man. So, so, so when they look at the response to dealing with the black nation, they look at it as having a chemical pharmaceutical response, you know, to, to soften up, you know, the most dangerous person that walks the planet to them, which is the black man. You know, let's weak them. Let's 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 make them soft. And so so we we use hip hop, and and the bullets that we put in it is the drugs, right? To allow people, you know, to see that yeah, this is the way you got to go if you want to get down. And that's really the furthest thing from the truth. So uh, that that's how I see it. You know, uh, for now, uh, you know, uh, I I want to really get into how it plays on you know the, the brain chemistry. But uh, we can talk about that a little later, you know, because uh, that, that's real important. And, you know, you ask the average person, you know, uh, different areas of the brain that controls a certain functions in the body, they probably couldn't even tell you what the basal ganglia is, you know, the, uh, the, the prefrontal cortex, the amygdala, you know, uh, the brain uh, ponds, you know, the, the, uh, the uh, hyper, the uh, hippocampus. Uh, hip, hip, uh, uh, area you know these are different areas that have control over certain parts of the body and most people don't even know that you know that you know they kill themselves but uh you know that, that's what i have for now you know um so i i, I just uh you know wish the brother you know uh uh peace and i hope his transition will be uh will be accepted you know as he flows back with the flow of the universe you know, yeah sure and that yeah, that's important. Um, y'all brothers want to jump in? So I'm gonna go share some stuff, man. Um, I, I see some questions in the chat. I'm gonna get to y'all real soon too in the chat. Well, you know, I um, <clears throat> I was never addicted to anything, man. But uh, you know, I grew up with family members who struggled with addiction, with drugs and stuff. I know some people say it's a disease, and others say it's an addiction. I'm not a uh. The expert on anything, all I have is anecdote to experience. And I do know when someone is struggling with something like that, uh, <clears throat> to some people, they think that you could just, oh, I can just use my mind and I can just, oh, uh, I'm good. I can do it with willpower. But willpower is not going to overcome drugs, man. It's, it's just not. 
that's something that you need a whole lot of help with. But the biggest thing is that you have to be willing to accept the help. And that's something that I've seen, you know, firsthand uh, just growing up and then for me being the age that I am now. So, um, yeah, you know, I, I, I've, never, I've never had a struggle, but I, I've seen people, again, in my family who dealt with that struggle. And I know it's, you know, pretty tough and hard, man. And it almost begs the question of if you see somebody going down a rabbit hole, should you stop them? If you love that person enough, how far would you go in order to stop that person from going deep down that rabbit hole? There's one train of thought that says, well, you know, you're a grown man, you're a grown woman. You know, you, 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 know, you, you, go, you go do what you want to do. But there's another train of thought that says, if you love that person enough, you'll do whatever it takes, man, to stop them from going too far down that rabbit hole. Now, so that's the question that I put towards, you know, you, to, um, you three brothers here that's on the live with me. How, you know, <clears throat> when you see somebody going down a particular path that you know is wrong, how far are you willing to go to stop them? Or you kind of feel like, no, that person grown. I've said my piece to them. So whatever they do is on them. Yeah. Well, 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 for me, for me, for me, master, you is that you can't, once a person has that fixed idea in their mind that they're going to use, they're going to use, they're going to use, you know, as a lay person, the only thing, and I'm, I'm saying that from a, as a person that has used drugs from, you know, I'm from A to Z. I'm talking about, you know, uh, start off with uh, Kabona, you know, uh, drinking wine, you know, smoking uh, marijuana when it was only three types of marijuana, Acapulco Gold, Matt, Panamanian Red, Dirt Weed. I'm talking about, you know, I pre-based before crack came out, smoked crack for 10 years, and they got clean, you know, got clean and did some work in the area of, of uh, you know, being a substance abuse uh, counselor. And, and I can tell you from my experiences, and, and I've seen and I've had uh, guys, you know, working uh, in probation. I've had uh, guys who have had significant time over their head, but could not stop using. And, 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 and the reason why they couldn't stop using because they, they weren't able to take the simple suggestions. Like, like I said earlier, you have to stay away from people, places, and things. And the first thing a person says is, wait a minute, I'm a grown man. How are you going to tell me who to hang out with? I, I do what I want. You know, not understanding that if you keep going to the barbershop, you're going to get a haircut. You know, you can't go, you can't hang out in the barbershop and think you ain't going to get a haircut because you're going to start comparing yourself to people to get up out of that chair. And you're going to see how, the, you know, when you sit down in that chair, you go through a transformation, man. You, you And when you get up, you shop, you know, and you keep watching that. And pretty soon you're going to check your own self and, and say to yourself, well, maybe I need me a haircut, too. And before you know it, you're getting a haircut. So, so, so uh, when you see somebody going down that rabbit hole, my suggestion is that you suggest for them to get professional help, get professional help, you know, because there was many days, there were many days that I said, I ain't using the day. I ain't going to use nothing. And I'd be in the house all day. And all of a sudden, somebody knock on the door. Hey, shorty black, you got a cooker? You know, a cooker is something you use to cook the, uh, to cook the cocaine in. You got a, you, you got a stem? A stem is something you use to smoke it out of. And if I know that if I got those tools, I'm smoking, I'm getting high for free. And it's hard to turn down a free one. You understand? So, so, so those things, uh, you know, those things, you know, continue to, to, uh, to, 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 to uh, fail us when we don't understand how the disease works. And then the disease is my thinking. It'll tell me I got this. I can handle it. You understand? And it, like I said, it, talk, it talks to me in a voice that I'm most familiar with, my own voice. <laughs> I, got, I got this. You understand? And, 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 and once I get it, you know, one is too many and a thousand is never enough. Like, and, and I, I used to tell, I used to tell uh, 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 my brother, Nev, huh? I said, I said, man, I can't even take a sip of beer. He said, man, a sip, you can't take a sip. I said, man, I cannot take a sip of beer. He said, why? I said, give me an allergic reaction. He said, what why? What you mean? I said, make me break out in spots. He said, a spot? I said, yeah. I'll be at the dope spot, the crack spot, the <laughs> weed spot. You know, I won't. <laughs> so I can't, I can't, I can't take the first one. One is too many. 
a thousand is never enough because I'm chasing now. Never to be satisfied. See, so these are things that you develop and learn, you know, how to set your recovery process, you know, in order. Can't do it by yourself, though. Um, Neb, you want to jump in before I jump in? Well, um, y'all made some powerful points right then. Um, right now, I can't point fingers to nobody. I've been smoking cigarettes since I was 13 years old. I, it's now been going on a month almost. I know the first week was hard. I know cigarettes ain't like crack, right, to a lot of people. But hell, my this was tough, man. A pack a day, pack and a half a day, almost two packs when you smoking. I mean, when you drinking, looking at everything, real, you know what I mean? But I feel a whole lot better since I, since I um quit. And like you said, my, my plan on not to go back, you know? And rest in peace to DMX, and I feel for his family. Go ahead, do it. Carry on with the next something, man. Well, no, I was just going to add on, um, um, since we're talking about addiction, because I was addicted to drugs before. And um, the thing with me is, though, I've always been the type of person, mind over matter. So once I made my mind up, it was a wrap. Um, I didn't go through no programs. I didn't lean on nobody. I made my mind up. I made my mind up that I wasn't going to smoke no more. I mean, I was, um, I, I made my mind up. I won't like, that's how I stopped smoking cigarettes. I made my mind up. I said, I'm not going to smoke cigarettes no more. And I quit cold turkey. I made my, the same with the drugs. I made my mind up that I was done, that I was done with it because I was tired of being broke. So I got to a point in my life where I was saying, I'm not going to be broke no more. And what I did was, you know, some people are strong minded and some people are not as strong minded. So you got different um, calibers of people, but I do know addiction is real and it's a disease, right? And when you when you caught up on that ride and you caught up and that disease is running you, it's hard to back away from it. It's hard to understand the detriment that is doing to you and your family. You know what I'm saying? Because it's not just you, it's your family. But since we're talking about um, disease and addiction, I want to share my screen because first off, I want to get to something. Um, somebody in the chat, um, the brother was talking about the conspiracy. What conspiracy? Right. So I'm going to I'm going to play something so you can read the article that it was something that was done. Somebody said it has nothing to do with mind over matter. Well, Rashid, I'm telling you how I stopped. I stopped because I made my mind up. I I stopped smoking cigarettes because I didn't want my youngest daughter to see me smoking cigarettes. So I made my mind up that I'm going to stop. Now, I don't know where your thought process is, but my thought process is everything starts with a thought. Regardless, everything starts with a thought in life. Either be the, the, before you cheat on your girl, you think of it first. Before you do anything in life, it starts with a thought first. First, you have to think it before you can achieve it. So when it comes to addiction and deciding to stop to do something, you initially has to start getting fed up. You have to start thinking in your mind that, you know what, I'm done. Like, I don't like this. Or you don't like the high. You know, some people get burned out. When they smoke weed, they burned out. They, they paranoid, right? That's your body to show you that you don't like the high. So eventually, you you tired of being paranoid. Why am I keep doing this to be paranoid, right? Mm -hmm. But everybody is different. I want you to understand that everybody is different. But I'm the type of person I always been strong minded since the day I was born, and I get that from my father because my father was strong out on drugs. My father was strong out on drugs for like 30, 40 years, and what he did was he moved from the north down south to get away from it, but. He clinked his life up. It took him like 10 years, but eventually he clinked his life and he stopped. So my role model was my father to see where he went, where he was at, and how he stopped. He stopped cold turkey himself. So I actually had a role model to see somebody actually do it. But let me share my screen because um, it's still uh, it's uh, a second before before you go, I'm just gonna add on to what you're saying to the um you know what the brother had put in the chat. Um what 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 brother said we were talking about is a law of mentalism if you you know you're familiar with the action to hootie 
Um, we do the first, you know, seven actions or the nine actions, but the first one is a law of mentalism. Anything that you see birthed out beginning in the, in, the, in the mind of someone, whether it's a, you see a table, it, it, it started, how, how a design started in somebody's mind. Whatever you see on this planet, whatever you see in a physical existence, existed, first existed within the mind of someone or, you know, i.e. something, you know, depending on, you know, whether people believe in God or, you know, whatever, whatever it is. But the second thing of, you know, to add on to what he's saying is you're right. Everybody is different. But one thing that everyone has to do, it has to make a conscious, a conscious decision to say that I want to change for my life. Now, the way that brother said Haru did it, um, I'm not sure he didn't add on and, and describe whether or not he reached out for help. He never went into those details. And sometimes I think people want some, want somebody to say, well, when I make my mind up, I, I go do X, Y, Z. But then you can make your mind up and say, look, I want to clean my life up. But that doesn't mean that you don't go get help. So you you have to make the conscious decision to say, OK, cool. I want to I want to start eating healthy or I want to start working out. So you have now made the first step by accepting like, look, I got an issue, I got a problem and I want to figure out how I can fix it. And so you made the decision. So then you start reaching out to other people to help you to overcome it. Well, you know, some people have to get on medicine. Some people have to go into the hospital. Some people have to go do rehab. Some people got to move away, whatever it is. But but no one can help you. No, no help can come to you unless you're first willing to receive any type of help. It has to start with you. Now, what happens after that? You know, that's that's completely a whole different ball game on 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 what happens. But you have to make the conscious decision. And, um, you know, my uncle was, you know, he smoked cigarettes and he got off. He got off smoking cigarettes, but he ate a whole bunch of food. <laughs> he gained a whole lot of weight. You know what I'm saying? So he, he dropped one vice and picked up another one. But um, anyway, I just thought I'd just add that in there, man. But uh, but yeah, but every everything does start and in, in, everything starts in the mind. So. If anybody was ever addicted to anything, in order for them to change, you can cry all you want to. Again, you know, I, again, I'm not no expert, but I, from anecdotal experience that I've seen, I've seen people beg and cry for people to get off drugs. I'm talking about crack cocaine back in the day. When I, you know, I grew up in a country, the way that people hit, we call it rocks. They would go to the store, get a can of soda or a can of beer, and they would punch holes in it, put the rocks inside of it, and take anything, they, like a, a butane light or anything they could put underneath of it, and they would hit it. That's what that's exactly what they would do. And I would watch people do this all the time growing up. I'm talking about in the middle of the country. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So like I, I, I seen it. I seen it firsthand. And then I seen it. I've, I've been seeing it for the last two or three years deal, dealing with some other people. You know what I'm saying? People that's very, very close to me. So, you know, right. um, I, I've, I've never I've never done it because I saw what it did to other people. And I, I, I made a conscious. I'm, I'm never going to put myself in that situation to be. To, to be that way because I saw the detriment of what it did. But I do know That's you. But I hold on one last thing. But I do okay. know you have to make a decision to ask for help and to be able to receive it. That's what anything. You know, if you walk around with a closed fist, not only you can't give or neither can you receive. So in order to yeah. get help, you got to open up. You got you got to let go. But anyway, that's my yeah. piece. Yeah. I will tell you, man. Master you it, you know, um, you 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 uh, eloquently describe, you know, the process, and and I want to thank you for that. And one of the one of the things that you said, you know, it is unique. I don't know if anybody caught it, but you said you said that uh, that uh, your uncle or somebody uh, did it, but then you know he started eating more. He started eat more in the process of uh, putting down the drugs and. And see, that's, you know, what happens a lot of times is that we switch addictions. That's what I meant by switching seats on the Titanic. See, because a lot of times, you know, I used, to, I used to talk to guys and do say, so, well, you know, I smoked crack for 10 years and I just stopped like that. I said, yeah, so, you know, what, what, you know, so when you start uh, having conversations with people that talk like that, you will discover that they can put it down like that only because they are switched addiction because now they're chasing women. And it don't seem as bad because they chasing women, or or they eat more. Like 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 what's his name? Uh, uh, used to uh, just passed from the stroke. What's his name? Uh, Luther Vandross. When he first came out with his uh, with his hits, he 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 was real heavy, but really come to find out, he had a food addiction because when he got real healthy, he you know 
uh, he, he learned how to deal with his feelings so he didn't have to eat behind it, and he lost so much weight, we thought he was smoking crack. No, he was back to his regular size. Because, you know, we didn't understand it in the beginning, you know, how he dealt with whatever he was going through. He ate. Eating was an addiction for him. <laughs> so food becomes it. So a lot of times we have to be real mindful of not uh, switching, you know, seats on the Titanic and trade one uh, addiction for another. And that's why I said it's important to seek professional help because they will be able to see that. That's all I wanted to share. I'm, I'm, I pardon me, uh, Neb. I know you want to get in. No, that, that's great. That's great. That's great stuff, Neb. There's a, you know, I'm, I'm not a Christian, but I, I used to, uh, I used to be a pastor. But there's a scripture in the Word, and I, and after this, I'm, I promise you're gonna be quiet. Um, but David, pretty much, I'm, I'm gonna, I don't, I don't want to add or take away from it. I, I don't remember the exact words, but um, David pretty much said that he has to be very, very careful on what he set his eyes upon. And so, you know, once you once you get to a certain age, you got to be very, very careful of the things that you allow to come up within your eyes, because we as humans, we are very, very sight sensitive. We go off about what not really about what we hear or what something feels like. We go off about what we see, mm -hmm. what we see, what we see. You know what I'm saying? That's why there's that's why, you know, you see so many commercials and that's why they have been in psychology. That's why certain colors do certain things, because it, it does certain things to you, because it, is, it enters through the gate of your sight, one of your senses. And for us as humans, we rely so much, so much uh, on that. And so with that being said, when you get a certain age, you do have to be careful of things that you set your eyes upon. You got to be very, very careful. And you can, you can even, the things that you allow to just even to come within your presence, because when certain things latch onto you, it can be hell getting them off. And then it goes as a parent, as a parent, you have to be very, very careful of what you allow your kids to set their eyes upon. Make sense of what I'm saying? Absolutely. All this stuff That's falls good. into addiction, all, all right. you know. But anyway, I ain't gonna go deep down that rabbit hole, man. But Neb, I'm sorry, brother, go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna say, we had a classmate, man. I ain't gonna call the names on this, on this live, man. But you can probably guess on your hand, you know, who it is, whatever. I was coming from Virginia, right? Going on Eastern Crossroad. You know, you get kind of right, easy crossroad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was hot summer day, man. And I saw one of our classmates, man. You know, he was cool in school, you know what I'm saying? And you know, I'm still cool with him. You still cool with him, man. You know, associate from, from school, whatever. Yeah, yeah. I picked him up, man. I saw him walking, man. He was putting the dumb, you know, like like 04, 03. Put right. the dumb up, man. It was 100 degrees outside, man. Stop. I said, hey, man. Hey, Cam, 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 Cam. Yeah, come on, get in the car, man. So, he won't go to the store and get a beer, right? I said, damn, after all that walking, he wanted a damn beer. No water. Right. Anyway, <laughs> went, hey, we were driving. I know I was driving like 55, 60. He was looking out, looking. Hey, man, stop, man, stop, stop. I'm like, hey, what's wrong with you, man? <laughs> Maybe hit pressure right. and everything. Like, hey, wrong with man? Hey, man, sweating and stuff. I said, hey, man, you just go back, man. I said, I'm not going back there. Man, go back, man. I said, all right, I'm going to go back there. He went straight to the ditch, man. He spotted a damn can in the ditch. Dang. You know what wow. I'm saying? Yeah, and the brother went wow. in his pocket, man. Look, the brother, listen, the brother went in his pocket, man, and pulled out that little crack rock. See, first of all, mm -hmm. I don't play that. Let me know what the hell you got in your damn shit. You know what I'm saying? Let yeah. me know. And he went that motherfucker, man, and stopped smoking, man. I said, yo, man, I'm about to put you with the regular damn store. Don't ask me for a ride no more. Yeah. <laughs> you know. It was um, that strong, bro. That's strong. Yeah. That's yeah, what I'm going to um, say about that, man. Go ahead, well, look, man. let me jump in. Um, Because somebody in the um chat is talking about DMX and the COVID. We're gonna get to that, brother. Um, trust me, we we well aware of um, DMX and the supposed COVID. We well aware of that, right? But let, I wanted we wanted to talk. We're gonna get to that, but let me share my screen because there's certain stuff I want to talk about, like because there's some stuff that we need to talk about that actually we are discussing since we're talking about addiction, right? Because there's some stuff that go on in our community that we need to start addressing, right? So I'm gonna play this video. This is a video. And I don't know if y'all know it, but we're gonna let DMX tell y'all what happened himself. Let me play this, man. But um, I wanted to play that real fast, throw some context into stuff. Cause some people knew, some people didn't know, right? But the thing about it is, in our community, how many people we hear of that lace blunts? Woolers. They call them woolers. Woolers, call them woolers. 
but the I'm rules. talking about oh, oh, rules. And but what I'm saying is they trick people into smoking. That's what I want to talk about. Not the ones that knowingly smoke wolves and smoke wolves. I'm talking about those in our community that trick other people who don't know that the blunt is laced, right? Like I said um, on my live, my uncle, when I was 14 years old, he tried to pass me a wooly. I'm 14 years old. And I was smoking weed. Should have been smoking weed, but I, I was smoking weed. My uncle tried, he passed me a fucking dirty blunt. Luckily, I knew what a dirty blunt smelled like. I knew it didn't smell the same. It didn't smell like the regular weed I was smoking. This had a whole different scent. Luckily, I knew about it. But what DMX said touched home to me because I done seen people get turned out off woolies especially a lot of girls. Niggas put them, get them to smoke them woolies, and that got them out there tricking. Like, this happens in our community a lot. And this is something I don't feel like it's talked about. And the people that are perpetrating this need to be warned. A warning need to be sent to them. Like, this ain't okay. You can't be sitting around here tricking people into smoking something that they don't know they smoking. And then they get addicted. And then the rest of their life is fucked up behind them, right? This is where I want this conversation, this, at least from that clip. Y'all could jump in, but this is what I wanted to talk about. I must quit, say it real quick, man. I know y'all, I ain't, I'm, look. The people that's forcing these little girls, are tricking these young girls, or even young boys. It's that woo situation y'all talking about? We need to treat them like the damn clan. We need to start putting foot in their asses, man. Because they are part of fucking up our community. Mm -hmm. I don't know if y'all agree with that or not, man. No, you it's, no, it's real. Yeah. I don't give a damn whether you're a Christian, you're a pro-black, I don't give a damn if you're an atheist. It's more of us than them. Okay? I don't give a fuck who you are. Somebody need to take your mother's heads off, man. And soon as they, soon it's gonna come. I'm, I don't give a fuck about this Facebook. It's gonna happen Monday. It's coming. You're right. You're right. It's coming. You're right, okay? Man. This is a promise. Y'all motherfuckers who out here fucking with these motherfucking young children. We drugs. Right. We're gonna take your fucking head off. That's all I'm gonna say. Go ahead, fellas. Yeah. You know, um, it just touched home with me, man, because I already know in our communities in the hood, like they do it, man. It, it's it's known, man. It's, they do it, bro. And like, and also we see we see people in the community who used to be sharp back in the day. And they got a hold of some bad dope, right? And then you see them, like they're not the same no more, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? This stuff happens in our community. And when DMX was speaking about that, I related to it because my uncle tried to do the same thing to me. And it's like, yo, we have to do, and like somebody got a saying about um, African-Americans. Everybody hate us, even ourselves. We the only race of people that everybody hate us to the point we hate ourselves also. So not only do the other races hate us, we hate us also. And this is detrimental to our survival. And I don't want to go too far off, but I just wanted to talk about that aspect of what's going on in our community. People turning people out, putting these woolies out there, getting people addicted to this shit, and they don't even know it. And like, you can hear it in DMX voice, man. Like, yo, that, that that like it was real. That ain't nothing he lied about. That really happened to the brother, man. Yeah, that's um. Yeah, that's 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 funny style completely, man. You don't. There's certain lines that you should that you that you just as an individual that you should just never that you should never cross. And anybody that do anything like that, I can definitely tell you they're not in their right mind. No matter how much they try to argue and say that they were in their right mind. You're not in your, you're not in your, you're not in your right mind. Something has literally taken over for you to allow, to, to allow you and persuade you to stoop to that level, to have someone that is not consenting. They don't have the age to make a wise decision. You understand what you, they, they don't, you know, to do these things on their own. And so anyone that does that to persuade someone to do something like that, there's, there's something wrong with you. 
to where your 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 brain is no longer in a normal state and it has to be it has to be corrected. And then you know another thing to add on to that. I mean, it, it, it's just straight what it is and people can call it whatever they want to call it. Any grown man and any grown woman of any a, a period, you're going to offer some kid that's 10 years old, 12 years old, 13, 14 years old. I don't care if y'all hang, I don't care if y'all ride. It don't matter. And you offer that kid some drugs and that kid take it. Whatever that kid do is now on you, period. You are now responsible. You get what I'm saying? So if that kid get killed, that blood is on your hands. Whatever it is, because you the one, you, you began the chain reaction and you knew it was not righteous when you did it. So whatever come after that, you have you you have made the conscious decision to say that I am willing to accept all responsibility for what's going to come after this. So if somebody catch you coming out of the club by yourself and they beat the brakes off you or even, or even blow your brains out, you accepted that. That's, that's, that's what you did. That's on you, man. That's on you. There's certain lines that you don't cross. You don't rape nobody. You don't slap nobody mama. You don't spit on nobody's kids. There's just some things that you shouldn't just do just off a of moral principle, period. You just shouldn't do. And something like that, when you cross that line, then whatever come to you, that's what you ask for. You ask for it, so whatever come to you, period. You know what I'm saying? So don't, you don't need to cry about it. You need to run no police. You need to go have at your mama house. You don't need for all that. You don't need for it. Because you, know, you get what I'm saying? Because when you make a decision like that, now you have involved everybody that's connected to you because people have, here's one thing people have to realize, man, and I'm gonna be quite out for this. Here's something I don't think people realize. A lot of time people think a lot of people is weak and that's not the case. There are some people who are weak, very adamant they are weak. There are some people who talk a, little, a good game who really not about that life, but there's a small percentage of people that's not very, very loud, that's not gonna say nothing, that's gonna knock your head completely off. Ain't gonna bury you in the back of a swamp somewhere nobody ever found you. You get what I'm saying? And some people do stuff and they act like those people don't exist because some people are not loud on Facebook or Instagram or, you know, they, they're not loud with the things that they do. There's certain things that you just shouldn't do, period. You shouldn't do. Any man worth his grain and salt, if you are to slap, if, you, if one of y'all daughters or sons, somebody were to slap one of your kids for no, no apparent reason at all, no, for no reason, just off, slap them outside of the head, slap them. Good luck on talking to that daddy. Good luck. You slapped his kid, okay, good luck. Good luck. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Now we talking about a slap. Now imagine this dude found out that you gave his child drug. Hmm. I ain't talking about no weed or no cigarette. You gave his, crack, he, you gave his child some heroin or some rock cocaine. You get what I'm saying? And this kid is seven, eight years old. What can you, when his daddy come to your mama house and say, everybody in the house going to get it when I get there, what can you tell this guy to tell him? What can you tell him? You know, I'm asking a question. What, what can you say? What can you say? What, what can you say? Ain't nothing you can say. Listen, it ain't nothing you can say. Because listen, now listen, I don't, I, we can't go too far because we're going to hone it back in the DMS. I just want to say this now. Some people don't believe in necessary evil. But let me tell y'all something. Some people believe that certain things deserve certain type of um, responses. So in that instance that you're speaking of, if that father goes there and terrorizes everybody in that house, who are you to tell that father that they wrong? Because as a, as a father, my job is to protect my children and my family at all costs. So when you cross that line, you can't tell me what is evil, what is right, and what is wrong, because that's in my, in the eyes of me. And I and I don't want to talk about this right now, but I would go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anybody and say at certain times, evil is necessary. I don't care. And I don't care who you are, we can have that discussion. Certain instances, I ain't gonna say, I'm gonna just say an eye for an eye and a two for a two. Certain instances, certain crimes deserve certain punishments. And whoever the person that commit the crime, you cannot complain about how you get punished. Because in war, there's no love in war. And there's no rules. You have certain rules in war. But war, you got to be a certain type of person to be in war. 
you can't be a happy person and be at war. Like when you at war, you gotta have warriors and warriors act like warriors. And sometimes you have to be evil. And that's just what it is. But I'm- You know, you know brother say real, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say something real quick. We dealing with Supreme Mathematics. We did number eight deals with bitter to destroy. And for a lot of time, whenever you say the word destroy, people look at that as being negative. You know, in the, the nation of 5%, you know, we, you know, we, we are, we, we are gods. You get what I'm saying? You, you are God. And as a God, once you reach a certain point, you become a master builder. And as a master builder, you have to realize in order to effectively build certain something, something has to be destroyed. Okay. Period. Building and destroying, it's, it's a yin and a yang. It has, it has to work. Your body builds and destroys on a daily basis. You get what I'm saying? Like your, your blood, your blood builds, um, you know, all the time. And then if I'm not mistaken, maybe the elder can chime, one of you all can chime in on it. I think a lot of times I, everybody body has cancer, but your body knows how to effectively destroy it. And it's when your body um, can, cannot recognize it, then it grows and it's not having the proper destroying. You get what I'm saying? So your cells are supposed to die off and new ones, new ones are being built. And so whenever you're looking at anything in life, there has to be a necessary process of building and destroying. And a lot of times people look at destroying as being an evil thing. But, e but when, you, when, you, when you become God in yourself, it's not that you're picking up an act of evil, you're just doing what is necessary. Because if someone does something to you, you are, it is, you, like if someone slaps your child, you're not returning evil off of what they did. What you're gonna do, I'm gonna give you a righteous action. And it's like, you get what I'm saying? Like if you step out of line and stole something from the store, um, your parent ain't evil if they correct you for it. Get what I'm saying? As long as they ain't trying to break your back or whatever, but then the consequence, they shouldn't return it with evil. But what they're gonna do is they're gonna righteously correct you. Now, the thing of it is how that person <laughs> righteously corrects you, that's up to that person. Because if you, if you break into someone's house with the intention to kill, is that man evil or that woman evil for them defending their family? I would say no. What they did, they did a righteous action. You know what I'm saying? So, but anyway. Neil, Elder, where y'all at? I'm going to say this, man. I'm going to say one thing. I know Elder going to speak longer than me. I'm going to say one thing for two seconds. We need to start celebrating drug culture, man. These drug dealers are part of the problem. So Absolutely. let's be real, y'all. I know the flashing gold rings, the music. Okay, I get it, man. It's entertainment. Stop looking at the drug dealers. Y'all need to stop selling drugs, because most of y'all are selling drugs to children. Let's be honest, y'all, the drug dealers who, li who listen to this, who want to be half conscious, half streets, half conscious, half, you know what I mean? Y'all are part of the problem. Y'all just as bad as the fucking police is. Y'all need to stop, and most of y'all selling drugs to the little 10-year-olds and 15-year-olds and making them out of damn prostitutes. Let's get real now. We need to start dealing, in our communities, man, start dealing with these damn drug dealers. If not, you're part of the fucking problem. That's all I'm gonna say. Go ahead, Elder. No, you good. You good. I mean, I, I I like what everybody has to say because uh, you know, we right on point, man. You know, we right on point. And and uh, I, I like what Asen Heru said because you know, you are you. There are people in the community, you know, they will they will slip you some, and and usually they have some ill intentions. They either trying to rape you, they are trying to get you know get with you in a sexual way. You know what I mean? Trying to lure you to do some things that you wouldn't ordinarily do, but if they if they can get you to relax like that, they're gonna do that. You know what I'm saying? Because you know you have some real, you know, uh, uh, grimy, uh, you know, I mean, uh, I mean, grimy cats that are out there. You know, um, female and male. You know that are they're using you know certain things as a as a weapon, man. And and de and drugs can definitely be used as a weapon. And just ask any you know so called uh, female crack addicts. You know people use them to you know to to uh, you know uh, quench their thirst, so to speak. So we have to be mindful of that, man. And and uh, I like what Haru said because you know we we sometimes might have to pass our own judgment. You know we might have because you know. I mean, you, you you can't just go around doing stuff like that, you know, because you, you're creating habit on an individual that may may even uh, take their own life, you know, and it's suicide on a time payment plan, a sniff at a time, a puff at a time, you know what I mean? And and, and uh, before you know it, they don't kill themselves. 
you know, and the, and and the person that turned them on to it is definitely going to be responsible. So how do we handle them? You know what I mean? And these, these are some of the things that we need to look at as a nation of people because we have to have our own, you know, uh, uh, Jewish uh, Jewish pews in, 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 in terms of how, how we setting up our own law. How do we adjudicate stuff like that? You know? So we need to take a look at that moving forward as a nation. Elder, real yes, quick. Yes, sir. To answer our law community, people tell you, man, it's all about the money, man. Hey, that's our law community. They have no drugs going on in that community. No, no, not at that all. That come from the white man. That come from the white man. The media is saying that, not us. Not yes. this new lobbying. The white man said that. So don't tell me it can't and, be done. Oh, we, it can be done, man, because, you know, we, we, lived, we lived in that community drug free. You know, matter of fact, when we lived, when we lived in the Ansar community on Bushwick Avenue, right behind us, right behind Bushwick Avenue, it was Wilson Avenue. Wilson Avenue was drugged out. It had a number of drugs on it. Now, when we first came to Bushwick Avenue, that whole Bushwick Avenue, you know, from, from uh, Lord Street to Sudan, I mean, to uh, Myrtle Avenue, was drugged out. We, we chased all them cats out the neighborhood, man. We, ch we, ch we chased drug dealers out the neighborhood and warned them. And if you got caught in the community, you know, using drugs, you got a beat down. You got a beat down. That was just it because, we, you know, we, we wasn't having it. Yeah, I'm, we, and I'm yeah. telling you, I'm telling you something that I that I experienced, and I know for a fact. And you got caught, you would, you know, you caught a beatdown because we knew that we knew that from experience. We knew from watching, you know, the the uh, Black Panther Party. What destroyed them was drugs from the inside. That's the same way the Nation of Islam said no drugs. They had a strong nation. If, if anything, they was cleaning brothers up from being strung out on the drugs. So we know that what destroys a nation is any mood or mind altering substance that could take your distraction and your purpose away from you at the drop of a hat pin. Drugs will do that to you. So we're talking about nation building. We got we have to get rid of the drugs. And anyone who attempts to to bring that on our people, that's say, that's Satan. That's Satan, and we need to deal with it. That's treasonous. That's treasonous. Oh, okay. Drug dealers are treasonous. So look, let me share my screen. Cause it's a twofold pro, um, twofold fold. Cause a lot of times people that's addicted to drugs use the drugs to escape the real trauma, right? So it's two parts to this, and we're gonna talk about this. Then we're gonna jump on the COVID thing, cause I know people um ready to hear. But let me let me share my screen. We're gonna go to the second part of the interview now. Um, where is it at? This right here. All right, this is the one. Right. This is part of. The Thank you for helping me open that door. Because Thank you, brother. That's one. This is part of the same interview, but it's just a second part, a different part where he talked about um, drugs and trauma. Right. And so let me play this. And all right, come on. This is another um, part of that conversation that hit home to me. Because, you know, he's speaking of trauma. And he's speaking of trauma as a kid, being traumatized at a young age to the point that you block it out of your memory. And what he said was, you run out of space because you traumatized so much that you run out of space blocking it out. <laughs> And you mess around and have a meltdown. So what he said was he had to learn to go back and deal with the problems that he didn't deal with back then. That hit home to me because, you know, I've been traumatized and I understand exactly what DMX talking about because I had blocked stuff out of my mind also that happened as I was a kid. And, um, it took a long time for me to be able to talk about it, to get over it, right? But that's something else that we don't talk about in our community as far as as far as talking about trauma and about how you actually feel, you know, as, especially as men. When it comes to men, we shy away from it, right? Because it, like you say, you don't look, it's not manly, right? It's look, you look down upon when you talk about your problems. Like, and like you said, don't nobody want to hear it. Because when I remember when I first <laughs> started talking about my problems, the person I was talking to looked at me like, 
I ain't a psychiatrist. <laughs> like, like, what, like for real, like what, what do you, that's how they looked at me. And the person was somebody that was very close to me. And it was like, like looking at me, like, I can't help you. It's like, I'm saying it's real though. But I'm just saying what he said, it touched home, man. And, and I, and I feel like he's opening up a box that we have to get into dialogue about. He's not the only one. You have a lot of NBA players now that's talking about depression. Um, like um um oh boy from um who who was his name um with the Clippers, um Paul George. You know Paul George was depressed. You know, and you got more and more people starting to come out, men coming out talking about depression and actually. And what he said, it is actually brave to talk about something that you hold dear to you that has hurt you, right? And and to get over it, right? So I just feel like that's something else that um need to be touched on especially in our community because we all got stuff that we hide you know what i'm saying but it's good to come out with it and like he like he was saying you got them demons and also what he said was it was a gift as a kid that you have the ability to block it out as a kid so it doesn't affect you as you're growing up but you can go ahead on y'all can chime in man on that as y'all but, but let, 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 listen listen to this right listen to this right you know, people get high for three reasons. They get high for three reasons. Fear, insecurities, and low self-esteem. Now, mind you, there are many types of fears. There are many types of fears. And when you're talking about trauma, let me give you an example. You know, there, there and, I, and I've dealt with this in, in many of my men groups that I've facilitated and in individual counseling. There are men who have been raped or a founder with as a child and 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 out of fear of being judged they caught meant they uh uh departmentalized that they stuff it in some part of the brain out of fear of being judged you understand and now now those are and there are many different types of traumas but i know that i've i've counseled people in in the circle based on you know, I, I, I was I was I was uh, molested as a child and I couldn't do nothing about it. And it, and it brings up anger because, you know, I'm seven to eight years old and I'm, I'm being molested. And I, don't, I, don't, I can't tell nobody because, you know, I'm afraid. Now, you can look at fear as an acronym, F-E-A-R, which is fuck everything and run. That's where you you start stuffing stuff or you could face everything and recover it. Mm. Or it could be, or it could be false evidence appearing real. Now, now uh, there are other people, right, that get high because of low self-esteem. You know, I, I'm I'm too skinny, and I don't, and and I'm I'm at a social event. I don't want you to judge me, so I'm gonna take a little drink to get loose. Now I'm loose, and I'm not thinking about the fact that I'm skinny anymore. Now I can socialize. You know, you or I'm, or I'm too heavy, or my lips is too big. Or, or my head is a little twisted. My nose is too big. You, you see, there's, there's a lot of things that can make us insecure, and, and there's a lot of things that that are uh, that are uh, that you know that we deal with because we don't like who we are. Can you imagine Mike Tyson, a big, burly, muscle bound dude, right? And, and he talks like, "Hey, man, what's up? What's up? What's up?" With a real high pitched voice, and, and Mike Tyson sniffed coke. He smoked coke. Yeah. You understand? Because he he had demons, and he also talked about being molested. Mm -hmm. He also talked about being molested. So 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 these are things. These are these types of traumas. People uh, be, uh tend to hide, and they get high over them. So so when we say that that drugs are nothing but a symptom of a deeper issue, you know, we use the drugs to cover up, and but not unless we deal with the issue, those things will keep coming back up. They'll come up time and time again. And that's why I said initially, sometimes we have to seek out professional counseling because a professional counsel would know how to deal with that, how to open up, you know, the uh, situation and close it properly because you just can't open somebody up and just leave them there. You know, that's like, that's like performing surgery, cutting somebody up and then leave them without suturing them back up and giving them the proper, you know, medication so that there's no inflammation, you know, going on. You feel what I'm saying? So, 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 yeah, you know, uh, you know, and, 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 you know, when you think about it, 
as a child, as a child growing up, you know, you, you, you 13, 14 years old. And, and one thing about the black community, right, we don't have rights of passages. There's not, there's not many men that can tell you how to, how to transition into a young man. You know, so so when I was hanging out with 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 13 and 14 year olds, you know, you if, you know, if you didn't know, you better act like, you know, you understand. So now. So when you start smoking and getting high, you know, and stuff like that, you know, you 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 more or less putting on an act because there's some things that you may have inhibitions about. You know, I, you know, I don't like my voice. You know, uh, I'm too short. You know, I'm too short and, and, and or, or I'm too tall. My, I'm too clumsy. My feet are too big. You know, we have all kinds of things going on when you don't like yourself as a, as a person. Because if you like yourself, you like who you are, you like how you sound, you, you know, you like how you look, why would you get high? Why would you use a, a, a you know, why would you, you know, use a drug to take you outside of yourself? And the answer to that is because you don't like who you are in that moment. So you want to alter who you are. And some people, like I said, they use it, they alter who they are through a, a blunt, a drink, a, a, a toke, you know, some pills, whatever it takes. Because I don't just, I just don't like who I am. I am too fat. And I think you'll like me better if I was muscle bound and, and, and fit and had all the, and, and was, it was all right in all the right places. <laughs> but can we accept who we are on a deeper level? That's the question. Can we accept who we are on a deeper level? And if we do, and when we do, we won't need nothing from the outside to fix what's inside. That's all I got. Right. You know, um, that's exactly, you know, um, what you just said, how you ended it was um, you need nothing on the outside to fix something on the inside, right? Well, it's an African um, proverb that I shared. Um, and what and it was something similar to exactly what you just actually two of them right the first one is the heaviest burdens that we carry are the thoughts in our head meaning when you think talking about the insecurities um the addiction um you think that um you know your nose too big you too skinny you know depression you know that was the african thought that says the heaviest burdens that we carry are the thoughts in our head right and then it was one, the last one, then I'm gonna let y'all jump in since you were talking about outside. It's, it's um, what was it? Um, what it says? Um, come on, come on. I don't think I'm gonna get, okay, hold on. I don't think I'm gonna catch it right now. I might not get it right now. It says, when, when there is no enemy within, the enemy outside self cannot hurt you. That was the other African proverb. When there is mm. no enemy within, the mm. enemy outside of self cannot hurt you. And that's a that's exactly what you just was saying right then. And that's mm. y'all want to jump in? Y'all want to jump in? We're gonna take this thing to the COVID part. Yeah, no, I, I would say this is set rule with um, what you just said. When there's no enemy within, you say the enemy without. Uh, uh, I can't remember the last thing that you said. The enemy outside of self. Can't hurt. Yeah, right. <clears throat> yeah, the, the, yeah, that's the biggest thing we got to overcome is ourself, man. We, we we place a lot of judgment on ourselves and we extend it to the outside world. Um, but but uh, nevertheless, man, I, I, I'll say this. I think everyone should really, really ask themselves, how much do you love yourself? And if you truly do love yourself and like be really, really honest with yourself, don't just say anything real quick, but look at your life. Look at your entire entire life, and then matter of fact, look at your daily routine and ask yourself, on a scale of one to ten, how much do I love myself? How much do I love myself? And then if like if you really really look at your life, you'll find that a lot of people are probably failing. It's probably forty percent. You get what I'm saying? Look at like what what are you doing? Like if you truly loved yourself, yourself as an individual, that extends to what? Not only you as mental, but physical, emotional, spiritual, all them aspects. There's certain things that we wouldn't allow in our body. There's certain things that we wouldn't allow, you know, be set before our eyes. You get what I'm saying? There, there, there's there, there's so, so many things that we would do, man. And so I used to ask people that all the time, people that I, that I was real close to, do you love yourself? Like, do you really love yourself? 
And they would always tell me like, yeah, I love myself. Yeah, I do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then when I started asking them questions and putting stuff to them, they would get quiet and some would get upset with me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Makes sense what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. And so a lot of the things that like you were saying, like for example, and this ain't this ain't you know this ain't this ain't no disrespect or anything. I used to, I used to drink with the best of them. No, don't, don't, don't I used to drink with the best of them, man. Don't don't get it twisted. But I know that that's that's not that's not something I can do. Why would I destroy my body, put something to me to alter my mentality? That will eventually, you know, if I'm not careful, it could allow me to get in some trouble. Like, no, why am I putting a chemical in me that my body don't want in me in the first place? I have to subject my body. You get what I'm saying? I have to lower myself in order to drink it. Makes sense what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. A baby don't need no alcohol. A baby don't need no cigarette. A baby don't need no type of drug. A baby don't need none of that stuff, man. That's stuff that we add on to ourselves. And all it does, man, is, is cause a detriment. You know, you brother, know, brother Polite, not to cut you off, Brother Polite got a saying, right, when he talk about eating healthy, right? Uh, and, you know, he always say is, the stuff that is healthy for us, we say it don't taste good. Right, but the stuff that actually is bad for us, it tastes good. And he was like, he always say that's a psychological thing because if something is actually healthy for you, it should taste good. Yeah. But the stuff that, that is actually not healthy for you, it should actually taste bad. You know, that's what I was thinking about right there when you was talking about. It's like basically with our body, the stuff that we actually really need, or the stuff that it's for us, like it, it we should we should yearn it because it's good for us. But the stuff that actually is not good for us, we should actually be pushing it away. So when you <laughs> ask when you ask that love question, you ask somebody, do you love yourself? And they say, Yeah, then you ask them, well, okay, well, do you exercise? Or or you know what I'm saying? Do you start yeah, yeah. You start, yeah. You, going like, ah. you know what I'm like, saying? Dang, I, yeah, it, it's a it's a gut check, man. But then here's something too, man, like. Again, I, I'm not I'm not pushing nothing on anybody. You know, I, I grew up eating pork chop bacon. <laughs> don't, like, don't please don't get it twisted. But um, if anybody go on like a four day fast, man, some people may say that's extreme. But say, look, going on, I, I not you have to be a dry fast and got to be a water fast. Going on, going on a, a, a like a three a three to four day fast, just eating like fruit. Eat fruit. Don't add no sugar. Don't add no salt. Don't add no oil. Or, or just go raw. Eat all raw foods for three to four days. When you turn around and start adding salt and sugar and stuff to your food, watch how it tastes. Because now your palate has be your palate has been re reset. You get what I'm saying? So that's why that's what I was talking about earlier. These psychologists and these scientists, man, when they put stuff in chips, they do it to make you addicted, man. That's how they make their money. That's how they make their, <laughs> that's how they make money. And I don't think people realize that stuff. They they purposely make things taste a certain way. To, a, to appease your taste buds. And they start kids when they're young. Look at those McDonald's commercials and stuff, man. It makes stuff look a certain way, but they add certain things into it to make it taste a certain way. So then every time you pass those golden arches, what do you want? You want a golden arch. You don't want no, you don't want no banana. Why? Because that's, that's a natural fruit. It ain't sweet enough for you. Or oh, it don't taste good. I, you, you get what I'm saying? Like a lot of people don't even know what, what vegetables taste like because they're drying it with, earth, with oil or throw way too much salt on it. You get what I'm saying? Like if you if you truly taste what a sweet potato tastes like without any seasoning on it, man, I'm telling you, go on a three to four day raw raw food fast. Raw. I ain't saying forever. Just three to four days. You can do it. You're not gonna die. Trust me. And then start putting that stuff in your food. You'll find a lot of stuff will make you sick, man. Will make you feel woozy and stuff. But over time, your body has built up a, a, a propensity, man, so it can handle that stuff, man. But all it's doing is destroying. That's it, man. But anyway, I ain't going on that whole long rabbit hole, man. But trust me, it's the truth. All right. Anybody want to add on? I'm going to take it to the last point. All right, let me share my screen. All right, so um, recently uh, we heard that um, Brother DMX actually um, took the um, COVID test, right? So what I did was I just went to Snoops, you know, because they fact check stuff, right? And I pulled it up. Did DMX take COVID-19 vaccine days before heart attack, right? And um, 
And then what it says is the, the claim is did DMX take the COVID-19 days, vaccine days before he suffered a heart attack? The rating says it's unproven. And it says this rumor comes from an unnamed source quoted in a gossip magazine that has published inaccurate information, whatever, whatever. You know, that's what they're gonna say anyway, especially dealing with um this thing here, right? But when you get down here. I want to read what this source said. It says, DMX got the vaccine when they opened it up to people over 50. He got it so that he could travel and perform, stuff like that. Everyone in the news keeps saying that DMX had a drug overdose. How do they know? I'm in the family. So this person is a family member. So when it says unknown source, you got to, it says I'm in the family. This is a family member, and no doctor told me anything about an overdose. Yes, he had. Yes, he had past his drugs, but nobody knows that he had an OD. It's fucked up that it's being reported like that. He took that vaccine and he had a heart attack. I'm not saying the vaccine did it, but he never had a heart attack before. So it says that the story um, was later um, spread, but this is where we get down here to the nitty and gritty. I'm gonna just scroll down here to the end, right? But this is where it says, um, while there is no evidence that a vaccine caused DMX heart attack. It is possible that the rapper was vaccinated sometime prior to his death. In New York, vaccinations open to people age 50 and older on March the 22nd, 2021. DMX died at yep. And now this is very key right here. While there is no evidence that a vaccine, vaccine caused DMS heart attack, it is possible that the rapper was vaccinated sometime prior to his death. That right here says a lot to me. So this right here is Snoop's, and this is where they fact check stuff. They said it's unproven. I just read what it said. You make your own conclusion. I'm not going to say one way or the other. I am going to say when I start talking to them. But I'm just letting y'all know that this is what the article says, right? Um, And y'all can go from there. Now, I forgot what we named this thing last time when we were talking about Elder. I think we had a special name for it when we called it. What did we call it? Um. <laughs> I can't think of the name of it. Oh, but y'all can jump in. Y'all can jump in and say y'all piece on this and what y'all, you know, what do y'all think? Um, me, I can just tell y'all, when I first found this out, I saw about it, I didn't pay no attention because we all know that the brother was on drugs. So I ran with it. Like I took right. it what it was. But after right. this came out, it makes you start to wonder. Yeah. Because the track record of celebrities getting these vaccinations and dying is we had we got a list of them now. Yeah, We're gonna show about one one of them, right? So we have a list of this, and from what I'm being told, the family been put on a, a hush hush, like you can't come out and say nothing about it, like. This, this one family member was like the rare one. But I'm hearing that the rest of them can't say a word. But y'all can jump in. Mm. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's deep because you have to remember, you know, the pharmaceutical companies don't want to take responsibility for any uh, uh, so-called vaccination-related deaths. So, of course, you know, they're going to take advantage of his history of drug use and pin it on that. That's the same thing they're doing with, with Charlie. 
They try to say that Chauvin wasn't responsible for the death of George Floyd. They trying to say the drugs did it. You understand? And that's that's the you know the squeeze out of being responsible for his death. And I'm pretty sure you know anytime you know you have a a a, a, a vaccine a vaccine related death, they're gonna look for everything in the world not to be responsible because if they're responsible, it's gonna cost them money. They could be sued. You know, they could be sued in the civil court. You, you understand? And so so you know it it could be very true that he actually died from you know, taking the COVID test and they put it off on the fact that because, you know, he was, uh, he was, a uh, uh, you know, a drug user, that that was the thing that killed him. But, um, you know, I looked at him, uh, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, months ago, his face was fat, you know, looked like he was, you know, living, uh, uh healthy, you know, and that, uh, you know, he had, uh, he had, uh, you know, a, a bunch of recovery because you can't smoke crack and gain weight. He gains some weight. You, you understand? So I would tend to want to at least investigate that level of, uh, you know, of information because, you know, it, it could be real, real uh, possible that he died from taking that vaccine because there are a lot of people coming up. After they take that vaccine, they're coming up dead. Hank Aaron, you know, and many, many more kick so right. um yeah. let me just throw this in i'm gonna throw this in I'm let you go Adams. i just typed in dmx death dmx death y'all google this y'all self it don't say he died of an overdose no more do y'all know that look on the screen i just typed in dmx death it says dmx rapper dies at 50 dmx died at 50 after star suffered heart attack this is what it says. Rapper DMX died at 50 at, at catastrophic heart attack. It talks about where TMZ still got the um TMZ still got overdose if you keep reading. Well, it don't say over OD no more. Just y'all Google this yourself. You Google this yourself and see what it says now. At first, it was that he OD. At first, everything was he OD. Google it now and see do it say he OD. Most of all the articles now are saying that he had a heart attack. Look at that's it. what it said. I'm looking it's, at that right now. Yeah, it, it you know what I'm saying? It don't say that he OD. It's saying that he had a heart attack. So what happened to all these ODs? Everything initially was he OD. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm uh yeah, they're trying to say uh yeah, I I look I got one is saying that a cause of death drug overdose. I just I just uh put in what caused the heart attack. I'm not getting any information back on that one. Yeah, um so you know that's just I I'm put that out there so um um y'all can um, respond to this um you know and um we're gonna go from there but you know I'm gonna just say it would not surprise me. Um don't nothing surprise me anymore. Um, but like I said in the very beginning of this, that we don't take losses, we take lessons. So at the end of all this, that's why I wanted to show them videos so we can take lessons from this brother, his struggle, what he went through. And we can take lessons from that and learn so we can move forward and better ourselves off the lessons that he taught us. But at the end of the day, that's what all this is about. This is how you become the perfect human. This is how you become who you become because of your trials and tribulations that you go through. And once you go through your trials and tribulations, you learn from your trials and tribulations if you don't, then you make the same mistakes. But most people that believe in growth and scroll, they learn from their mistakes and they grow into becoming that perfect person because they learn, right? Go ahead, Neb, jump in. You know, I ain't gonna hold y'all long. Peace, family. And you know, this is a learning experience, y'all. And um, 
You also got the feminist um and the LGBT. Some of them is attacking him, talking about his uh, uh masculinity. Going back 20 years ago, talking about that song. You know what I mean? I mean, y'all heard about that, right? Yeah, 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 they want to counsel him now. Right. You know, so, you know um, what I mean? It's crazy, man. I know every gay person don't hate DMX. That's just the white establishment. The higher ups pushing that crap, man. You know what I mean? That's how I feel. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, don't want to chime in on that? You know, I'm going to watch what I say when I say this. Look, man, truth is truth. So, like, um, you got this new culture that ain't done. You got this new generation that ain't done nothing. They ain't brought nothing to humanity. They ain't brought nothing to move us forward, but they want to cancel everything, right? And these alphabets games that's 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 around here right now that's basically trying to run everything and force everybody to be a part of their alphabets. Um, like, yo, it comes a point in time where in <laughs> it comes a point in time, man, where in watch your mouth, watch your mouth. We gonna say enough is enough. And it comes a point in time when enough is enough, man. It's like, okay, like, yo, y'all, we can't take it no more. You can't push us in no corner. You can't, listen, man, you can't push no, listen. If you put a cat, I'm, I'm, I'm going to watch what I say, but listen, you All can't right. put no, you push a cat in a corner, you put any animal in a corner, That you don't, you don't want that, that animal coming up out of that corner, family. Like you can't, so they need to slow down before before things get wicked. And I keep using that word for a reason. Like, Joe, you can't push people in the corner, man. You push the wrong people in the corner. You're not gonna like when they come out. That's all I'm gonna tell you. Go ahead, bro. One thing, one thing, man. You're so right. And then Max was a professed Christian. Some people say he would eat whatever. But he was a professed Christian, man. He loves him Jesus, you know what I mean? But at the end of the day, he was telling the truth, man, about the Illuminati and about how the society is. That's what they're mad about, man, because he exposed, not trying to get into the deep state stuff, right? But he exposed a lot of stuff that's going on in the industry, man. That's why they're coming after him. That's why they did that to him. You know what I mean? Mm. To me, he was sacrificed. That's just how I feel. I'm sorry, man. You know? He exposed the industry, bro. He was like another he was an East Coast Tupac. Well, Tupac from the East Coast, but you know I'm you know what I'm saying, right? Mm -hmm. He exposed him, man. As a Christian, whatever. He exposed him. And they got rid of him, bro. And they use drugs, they'll do the same thing in Lil Wayne. They'll do the same in the future. If you get out of line, they're gonna find a way to get you out the game. Yeah. I I I can I agree with you, Neb. I, I agree with you. Yes, sir. We have to look deep into this stuff, man. When you're dealing with this bloodline stuff and Hollywood, we're talking about witchcraft, man. Sorcery. We're talking about pharmaceutical it's sorcery. If you look yeah. at pharmacy, so, pharmacy, it means sorcery in Greek. Yeah, pharm pharmakeia. That's what the word break is. Down, pharmakeia. Break down Hollywood. Where, where the Hollywood, the tree come from? Well, yeah. look at this, what's going on. The real Satan, Shaitan. Yeah. He's not in the ground. Shaitan Call itself he chosen. They chosen people. Chosen 13 bloodlines. Rome. That's the ones who run everything. CNN, Fox News. Got all y'all talking about Democrat Republicans fighting each other. People need to really wake up, man. Seriously. Mm. They control everything. Some of y'all yeah. NWCP, y'all black thing going on. They control that. Y'all yeah. little white patriot shit going on. They control that too. Got y'all yeah. fighting each other. I'm sitting by eating my damn popcorn. Y'all yeah. yeah. <laughs> call yeah. us hotels. We too black. Y'all crazy. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Keep being a yeah. sheep. That's what I'm gonna say. Yeah, it's crazy, man. Yeah, crazy. You know, you know, um, you know, I'm I'm gonna stay off that um <laughs> subject because I don't want to go 
take this somewhere else. Um, but um, you know, um, I just hope we all learn from the brother, man. Um, hate to see the brother on um, pass, man. Um, legend in my eyes, on um, one of the realest um MCs, you know what I'm saying? He 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 put he put his life in his music. He put his life in his music, man. He put his pain in his music and you know. That's what make music what it is, and that's what that what makes people stand out. Great artists is because you know that they they put their life into it, man. And what they speaking about is what they live, and 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 we can relate to it because if we've been in certain parts of the world, certain communities growing up, like you know, a lot of times you can relate to it, man. And that's what make you know great artists is great artists, you know. So um, you know, I want the brother to be at ease. He at peace now. Um, you know, we have to stop looking at death as a bad thing. Um, actually, start. I say the brother living now. He gonna live like he never lived before now. He ain't got to worry about these earthly things that we got to worry about now. He ain't got to worry about it, right? Um, he ain't got to worry about addiction now, right? <laughs> a lot of things yeah um, yeah yeah we're gonna um we're gonna say that for another and we're we gonna say that one there we're gonna stay on the max <laughs> we, we don't want this video to get flagged so far we're doing good they ain't shut it down they ain't shut us down yet man so um but look, man, I want to give y'all, I really appreciate y'all for coming up here. And also, look, man, everybody in the chat, man, everybody that's been watching this, um, you know, Monique, Michael Hunt, uh, Asia Bennett, you know, I appreciate all y'all. If I don't say your name, it's not personal. But I really do appreciate y'all watching this. Um, you know, I know y'all, we used to do it all the time. Sheila Barnes. Um, if I don't say your name, I'm sorry, but you know, we appreciate y'all watching. Um, you know, Mildred Winford, Marvis Hassel. I ain't seen that brother in a minute. But I we appreciate y'all watching y'all. What I want to do, I want to give everybody an um, opportunity to close out. Y'all give y'all all the final um closing remarks, man. We're gonna end the show. Great show, everybody. I appreciate you all for having me on. Much love. Yeah, it, 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 was, it was a great show. This is Elder Remesso. Uh, it was a great show. It's an opportunity to, to talk about what our issues are and get some clarity behind it. And uh, I think that, uh, well, I don't think, I, I know we need to have more shows like this. So I want to give a shout out to the RBGs of North Carolina because, uh, you know, they, they are actually taking the time and they're doing the work. You know, they're being operative and not speculative. And that's what we need. We need to be doing this work. And if doing the work uh, is not important in you, then you need to find another purpose in life. <laughs> that's right. Rob, back to my nation. Uh, peace to everybody else. Same thing. Um, I enjoy the show. We definitely do more. The RBGs and the Green Vibes definitely doing the work. Bringing water to Africa. Doing the work of Jesus. Y'all don't, don't even know it. Doing the work of Muhammad. Just don't even know it. I want y'all to have a good weekend. Be safe out here. Peace and love and light. Yeah, family. Um, you know, well, I appreciate y'all. That's all I say, man. Y'all see us later. It's a lot. They right, man. We doing a lot of work, but everything ain't meant to be told. You know what I'm saying? Some things meant to show. Some things ain't meant to be shown. But at the end of the day, we, I appreciate y'all, man, for taking y'all time to be here. Y'all didn't have to watch this. I really appreciate this. Um, And y'all look forward to us. And like I said, man, remember, we don't take losses. We take lessons. We learn from everything. With that being said, peace. Um, why do? Why do? Why do? Peace.